What's up guys, this is Sean Heather and in this video we are going to do a benchmarking test comparison of Huawei's green smartphone processor. So here we got Huawei P40 Pro with the latest flagship Kirin 990 processor. Then we got Huawei Nova 5T running on Kirin 980 processor. Here we got Huawei Nova 7i with Kirin 810 processor and then Huawei Y9s with Kirin 710. So here we got a flagship processor, last year's flagship processor, a new mid-range green chipset and the entry-level green 710 processor. So we will see how much difference we are going to get in terms of benchmarking test score result and then we can roughly get the idea about the difference in performance as well. But before starting, if you have not subscribed to this channel so far, then hit that subscribe button and do not forget to press the bell icon to get the notification for future uploads. So the benchmarking applications we got here, they are Antutu Benchmarking, 3 Mark, and Geekbench 5. So first of all, let's start with Antutu Benchmarking. So Huawei P40 Pro with Green 990 processor scored 467,916. Huawei Nova 5T with Kirin 980 scored 386,713. Huawei Nova 7i with Kirin 810 processor it scored 302,037. And Huawei Y9S with Kirin 710 processor it scored 183,848. So as expected, P40 Pro is at the first spot and after that it's Nova 5T, Nova 7i and then Y9S. You can also have a look on the individual test score result for CPU, GPU, memory and UX and as you can see that the pattern is exactly same in all of these four tests. P40 Pro is at the first spot after that it's Nova 5T, then Nova 7i with green 810 and then Huawei Y9S. Now let's go back from here and let's have a look on 3D mark. So this one is divided in two parts, Slingshot and Slingshot Extreme and Slingshot Extreme is divided in OpenGL and Vulkan. So first of all let's just start with Slingshot. In that P40 Pro scored 4090, Nova 5T scored 4113, Nova 7i scored 3235 and Y9S scored 1159. So this time in slingshot test performance of Nova 5T is a bit better compared to P40 Pro. Now talking about the slingshot extreme, it's the same exact pattern that we have seen earlier in Antutu benchmarking. In both slingshot extreme, OpenGL and Vulkan, performance of P40 Pro is the best. After that it's Nova 5T, then Nova 7i and after that it's Y9S. So in out of these three tests, in two of them performance of P40 Pro with Kirin 990 processor is better. So once again we can consider it as a winner. So first position, second position, third position and fourth position. Now let's go back from here and let's have a look on the next test and that's Geekbench 5. So Geekbench 5 is divided in two parts, CPU and Compute and CPU is divided in single core and multi core. Once again P40 Pro is winner in single core and multi core both. After that it's Nova 5T, third spot once again is occupied by Huawei Nova 7i and after that it's Huawei Y9S. So we are getting the exact same performance that we are expecting from the chipset because the best one we got on P40 Pro, after that it's Nova 5T, then Nova 7i and then Y9S. And the benchmarking test score result is also proving the same point that these processors are going to perform in this manner. Let's go back from here and let's have a look on the compute test result. And it's the same thing once again. So P40 Pro is the winner with 3,675. Nova 5T is at the second spot with 2,782. After that it's Nova 7i with Kirin 810, 2,273 and Y9S with Kirin 910 is at fourth position with 979. So considering the category and performance level of all of these Huawei's Kirin chipset, the benchmark test score results are pretty valid. But here we are not trying to show that one chipset is bad compared to the another one because all of these Kirin chipset are targeted to a different segment of the smartphone. For example, Kirin 990 is the flagship for Mate 30 Pro and P40 Pro. Kirin 980 is the flagship processor of last year. After that we got Kirin 810 that's a mid-range smartphone chipset and at last we got Kirin 710 that's 
a smartphone chipset designed and developed by Huawei for budget smartphones. And that's why we are getting the performance accordingly as well. So now you can get the idea that how much difference you are going to get in terms of performance between these chipset if you are going to buy Huawei smartphones. So that's all for now friends. Thanks for watching this video. If you found this video useful, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, subscribe the channel and do not forget to press the bell icon to get the notification for future uploads and I'll see you guys next time in an another video. Have a nice day.